All right, so from page nine, the anatomy of a shift, shifts occur whenever supply and demand move out of balance. A shift occurs when the market moves from a seller's market to a buyer's market. Now, I'm going to just change that a little bit or slow down a little bit and, and, and give you a, a little bit more information on this. A shift occurs when we move from a seller's market to a buyer's market. Okay, I agree with that. And I have a little bit of a different opinion on that as well, okay? Uh, according to the National Association of Realtors and according to Gary Keller's book, Shift, uh, we have seller's market, we have a balanced market, and we have buyer's market. And anything that is zero uh, to three months of inventory, four months of inventory, according to the book Shift, is considered a seller's market. And anything four to seven months, again, according to Shift, is a balanced market. Anything over seven months is considered a buyer's market. And, and I'm going to just say that the market shifts much faster than that. We don't have to move from a seller's market to a buyer's market in order to experience the pain of a shift. We're experiencing it already. You're experiencing it right now. And there's still low inventory, but yet the market shifted and it's shifted in the form of fewer homes being sold, less available income for all of you, and more real estate agents in the market. Yes or yes? yes? Okay, so we're in a shift. Now, I'm gonna back that up with year to date in Coral Springs Parkland, the number of homes sold is down 18.9%. You guys know that because I've told you that pretty much every day for the last two weeks. However, what I haven't told you is listings are up 12.3%. Listings are up. Sales are down. It's a shift. You guys paying attention? Now, shifts create pain for two reasons. First of all, fewer sales and less available income. Fewer sales and less available income. Now, like I shared in yesterday's team meeting, this is not a doom and gloom conversation. This is I'm preparing you to survive, to thrive in a shift Better yet, I'm preparing you to thrive, even though the market is shifting, uh, and knowledge is power. So this information is critically important for you. But I don't want you to hear doom and gloom, because that's not the message. The second thing that a shift does is it tends to be abrupt. It tends to be abrupt locally especially. Now, I'm going to share my screen, and we're going to go into this just a little bit further. Hopefully, I share the right screen. <laughs> yeah, cool. I did. All right. The misleading aspect of an economic shift is it seems relatively natural and gradual when looked at nationally. When experienced locally, it is usually dramatic and Fast. So if you look at the picture on your screen, you'll see that around 2005, this spot, this line up here at the top is the number of homes being sold. And you'll see between 2005 and 2006, we started to see that decline. Kind of like today, right? Sales are down 18.9% year to date. Well, go back to 2005 and 2006, we were experiencing the same thing. I was a real estate agent in that market. I remember it like it was yesterday. And by 2006, look how far the number of homes being sold had dropped from mid-2005. And then by 2008, it had dropped all the way down to here. And if you look at inventory, this line at the bottom, 2005, the inventory starts to creep up just like it is today. And by 2006, we had gone from less than three months of inventory to six months of inventory. In less than a year, 
we had moved from less than three months of inventory to more than six months of inventory. Everybody following me? Okay, now at the same time, again, not doom and gloom. I want you guys to hear this. In the middle of the shift, say 2008, there were still 5 million homes sold. Now, if you go back to the peak up here before the market started to drop, in 2005, there were 6.4 million homes sold. So we had moved from 6.4 million homes sold to just over 5 million homes sold. There were, my, here's my point. There were still 5 million homes sold. Hello? If you want to look at it another way, you can even go back to here where we were in 2008 and just draw a line back to 2002, we were selling more homes in two, we were selling the same number of homes in 2008 as we were 2002. And check this out, 2002, people were celebrating. They were celebrating about the rising market. Life is good. It's all perspective. You guys follow me? Now, it's, what's interesting is the next slide is gonna give you an idea of what this looks like locally. So this is, a snapshot of the market in Sacramento, San Diego, Las Vegas, Orlando, and New York City. And 2005, we peak and the market starts to drop. And within 18 months, we had lost everything that we had gained since 2003. It took 18 months for us to lose all of that increased sales volume that happened up to 2000, um, that happened over the previous five years. Five years, the market's climbing, 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 18 months, it's dropping, and 18 months later, gone. It happens abruptly, like that. That's why it creates pain. Okay, now, What's the solution? There's the reality. Now, what's the solution? Well, in order to find the solution, I went back to shift and I went to page 49. This is my favorite page in this book. And here's what Gary has to say. Just because the market has moved from more to less doesn't mean you have to. Just because the market has moved from more to less doesn't mean you have to, Nick. Doesn't mean you have to, Rosario. Doesn't mean you have to, Alex. Doesn't mean you have to, Arinthia. You guys get this? I want you to hear this. Just because the market has moved from more to less doesn't mean you have to. As leads become fewer, if there's fewer homes being sold, then are there fewer leads? Say yes. Yes. I talked to a real estate agent yesterday who was sharing that they did an open house this past weekend and they had three people come through, three people in two hours. And they were sharing with me that same open house six months ago would have had 24 people come through. The market's shifting, okay? Fewer leads, fewer people visiting an open house equals fewer leads. Fewer people visiting an open house equals fewer leads. And this particular agent that I was talking to, their strategy, and it's the strategy at this company, is open houses. And I asked her, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do different? Because if open houses aren't working anymore, what's your plan now? Your answer was, I don't have one, John. I don't know. Fear, panic, pain. You guys hear me? Of course, I had a solution for her. As leads become fewer, you must recognize the situation and make a more concerted effort to generate them. You must be more rigorous and resolute in your lead generation than ever before and more so than anyone else. So it's a competition. There's fewer leads. There's more real estate agents 
competing for those leads, it's a competition. You have to outwork your competition. They can have more skill than you. They can have more money to spend on advertising and marketing, but you control whether or not they outwork you. You decide if anybody outworks you. You decide if you're gonna spend an hour in lead generation or you're gonna spend four hours every day in lead generation. You decide if you're gonna go out in 98 degree weather and 100% humidity and knock on 100 doors or you're gonna stay inside in the air conditioning and stare at your phone and wait for somebody to call you. You decide that. You must be more rigorous and resolute in your lead generation than ever before and more so than anyone else. In fact, now is the time to shift your lead generation activities into the highest gear possible. All right, talk to me, what'd you hear? Hey, Michelle, talk to me. Your hand is up. I'm sorry I missed you. Well, I like the way you ended it because you talked about gears. And just yesterday, I mentioned you have to be willing to shift the gears. Mm -hmm. um, but I did want to share, uh, I was talking.